Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday, February 13th. A lot to talk about this morning. I want to kind of focus in on some teleconnection indices that suggest we have a colder and stormier pattern setting up here for the uh, mid-Atlantic region, the uh, entire eastern part of the U.S. We have a couple of storm threats this upcoming weekend, another one perhaps by the middle of next week. Nothing is set in stone at this point. But I want to talk about some of these indices that, again, suggest we're headed for a colder and stormier period. We, of course, have just gone through kind of an extended winter weather event with some snow and ice. Today, the main weather factor will be strong winds that could gust up to 40 miles per hour or so in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. And by Friday, we'll get much milder ahead of a cold frontal system, probably temperatures in the 50s on Friday with a couple of showers, nothing more than a couple of showers associated with a strong cold front. Much colder air mass moves in for the weekend, and again, there could be not one but two low pressure systems to deal with, at least in parts of the Mid Atlantic region this upcoming week. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, I want to kind of focus in on some of these teleconnection indices that I've been tracking over the last several days. First of all, up in the North Atlantic. We have a couple of indices, one called the Arctic Oscillation and another one called the North Atlantic Oscillation Index. They give meteorologists a kind of a sense of the pressure pattern, the temperature pattern up across the North Atlantic, and that often has an impact on whether cold air masses can drop south and east into the eastern part of the U.S. from northern Canada, and also gives us an indication as to whether or not those cold air masses can be sus sustained. It's been one of the problems in recent weeks is we do get cold air outbreaks, but they really haven't been sustained cold air outbreaks uh, upon arrival of low pressure systems. We've had many situations where it's snow, then changes over to ice and rain, much as was the case with this past storm over the past couple of days. First of all, the Arctic Oscillation Index, all indications in red here suggest a downward trend. In fact, some a significantly downward trend into negative territory. Generally, this is the, the neutral line right here. Generally, when the Arctic Oscillation drops into negative territory this time of the year, it indicates cold air outbreaks can indeed make it into the eastern part of the U.S. Again, everything in red here is to forecast over the next couple of weeks. Well, now let's jump to the North Atlantic Oscillation. The way I look at this is if the North Atlantic Oscillation drops into negative territory, then that uh, favors more sustained cold air outbreaks. And it's been rather neutral over the last several weeks. And again, that's been one of the, the issues is sustaining cold air masses in the Mid-Atlantic region. And hence, we've had uh, some situations where it's snow changing to ice, changing to rain. Some forecast models now suggest a slight downward trend in the North Atlantic Oscillation over the next few weeks in the negative territory. That could become crucial. Basically, that uh, indicates it could uh, be some more high latitude blocking over places like Greenland, for example. You could have higher heights than normal, higher pressures than normal. That acts to sustain cold air outbreaks in the uh, Mid-Atlantic region and uh, more broadly the eastern part of the U.S. So again, some signs here are finally the NAO going into negative territory over the next few weeks, and we'll continue to track that as well. Now, let's jump to the Pacific Ocean, and this particular index is known as the Southern Oscillation Index. We have a daily contribution here for the last several days, and notice it has slid into negative territory, and in most recent days, uh, quite negative. Now down to negative 25. Again, this is the SOI, the Southern Oscillation Index. When this drops into negative territory for a sustained period of time, it tends to suggest that El Nino, warmer than normal conditions in the tropical Pacific, is strengthening. And that is a key player here for a, a projection of a stormier pattern over the next several weeks. When the El Nino becomes more uh, 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 intensified, that tends to activate the southern branch of the jet stream. You have added water, water vapor moving into the lower part of the atmosphere. You just have more buoyancy with the warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific. That in turn activates the southern branch of the jet stream and that enhances chances of storms crossing the southern U.S., 
perhaps even riding up the east coast, all more favorable for snow in the Mid-Atlantic region. So again, a big drop in a negative territory for the SOI index, tending to suggest that the El Nino will become stronger over the next couple of weeks and have more of an impact on the southern branch of the jet stream. And whether, one other index I'd like to talk about, the Madden-Julian Oscillation Index, known as the MJO. We've talked about this in recent days as well. This tracks a tropical disturbance in the global uh, part of the, uh, in the global tropics that propagates around the tropics on a regular basis. And depending on the phase, a particular phase of the MJO, it has uh, uh, a certain impact on the temperature and precipitation patterns around the world, including, of course, here in the eastern part of the U.S. In general, when the phase of the MJO crosses through phase 8 and then into phase 1 and 2 this time of the year, it re results in colder than normal conditions in the eastern U.S. This is a, uh, a European model run of the MJO going forward. All the forecasts for the MJO here are showing up in green. Notice here it kind of works its way through phase 8 and then into phase 1 and phase 2 and phase 3 over the next few weeks. This goes all the way out basically from mid-February to mid-March, a crucial sign that indeed we will be heading into colder than normal conditions here for a sustained period of time in the central U.S., in the eastern U.S. as we go through uh, MJO phases 8, 1, 2, and even into 3. Again, this time of the year, those phases generally result in colder than normal conditions. So the, the four indices we've looked at so far tend to suggest stormier weather pattern going forward and a colder weather pattern going forward. Well, let's now talk about the short term. And first and foremost, we have a major storm headed into California. This is a, 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 a an imagery loop of basically water vapor from the University of Wisconsin and it shows this plume of moisture headed right towards California. So you'll see some references to an atmospheric river and this is what they're referring to here just a plume of moisture, very impressive plume of moisture riding from the Pacific Ocean right towards California and they will be inundated with coastal rains and inland snows over the next few days, a major Pacific Ocean storm headed right into California. The Sea Air in Nevada will get another several, several feet of snow. They've been absolutely pummeled with heavy snowfall over the last several weeks, and the next few days will present multiple rounds of snow for the Sierra Nevada, and uh, probably 10 feet of snow, of, of snow in those higher elevation regions across eastern California. Uh, and that, of course, is good news because that's a, uh, the, the melting snow in the summertime provides water for Southern California uh, from the Sierra Nevada snowpack. So that's actually good news. Uh, and again, a major storm system headed into California. Well, now let's take a look at last night's 60 GFS, GFS model run. We'll look at the upper level features right now, again, of 500 millibars, and there may be not one but two different systems that could impact at least parts of the Mid-Atlantic region this weekend, and then another potential system by the early, uh, excuse me, by the middle part of next week, maybe later Tuesday, Tuesday night, into Wednesday time frame. Here we begin the day on Wednesday, and again, the big story here for today in the I-95 Carter, strong wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour or so, maybe even a couple of afternoon snow showers to talk about. Here we go, that upper level feature that contributed to the last couple of days of inclement weather around here moves off to the north and east. Now let's go through the day on Thursday, basically a, a, a relatively quiet day on Thursday. And then we have another upper level feature crossing the Great Lakes by Friday morning. That'll swing a cold front through the mid-Atlantic region. Not much rain uh, associated with it. I'd only expect a few showers late Thursday night and during the day on Friday. Temperature jump up into the 50s ahead of that frontal system, but once that passes by, it'll become a kind of a crucial player as it'll usher in a colder air mass for the upcoming weekend. And here we go, a, a legitimate looking upper level feature right here comes Saturday morning. This could move right along that Frontal boundary zone, once that cold front passes through Philly and D.C. and New York City, 
later Friday, Friday night, it'll kind of stall out across the southern part of the Mid-Atlantic region and a couple different waves of energy will ride right along that funnel boundary zone. Here's wave number one. It could throw some snow into Virginia, Maryland, perhaps as far north as southern Pennsylvania. Right now it looks like it may stay south of the New York City metro region, but the Delmarva, southern New Jersey, southern Pennsylvania perhaps, and uh, certainly the D.C. metro region could get in in some snow action. Uh, maybe a mixture of rain and snow, but uh, right now here's wave number one potentially for the early part of the upcoming weekend. That's, let's then move forward. Here we go by the latter part of the upcoming weekend. We have another wave of energy here showing up over the Ohio Valley come Sunday morning. That could spread some precipitation, perhaps in the form of snow, a late Sunday, Sunday night time frame for the Mid-Atlantic region. And then let's move forward again, and we have another deep trough headed through the southwest U.S., and that just moves to the north and east, and ultimately, by late Tuesday, Tuesday night, that could uh, set off another round of precipitation, wintry precipitation, in the mid-Atlantic region. Let's say by Tuesday, late Tuesday, Tuesday night, going into the day on Wednesday, and here we go, by Wednesday of next week, we're talking one week from now, another wave of energy sitting on top of us. So, looking at this Upper level pattern, we have perhaps three different systems to monitor over the next week or so. One early in the weekend, one later in the weekend, and then one by the uh, middle part of next week. Well, let's now wrap up with looking at the surface forecast maps from last night's 60 GFS model run. Notice, starting off today with a lot of isobars in the mid-Atlantic region. In other words, a rather tight pressure gradient between the departing low pressure system and a building high pressure system. Again, wind gusts this afternoon uh, uh, past 40 miles per hour or so in some of the mid-Atlantic region. Still some residual ice and snow and some trees in the mid-Atlantic region. Hopefully it will not result in uh, numerous power outages, but that is on the table with 40 mile per hour wind gusts during the midday and afternoon hours combined with some residual ice and snow and some branches in the mid-Atlantic region, especially higher elevation areas. So we'll watch for that. And again, maybe a snow shower or two sneaks its way into the I-95 Carter during the PM hours. Let's now move forward Thursday. Basically a quiet, chilly day, plenty of sunshine, much less in, in, in terms of wind in the mid-Atlantic region. Then we get into the late night Thursday into the day on Friday and basically a cold frontal passage during the day on Friday. It does not look like it will be a significant rain event. Temperatures do jump up ahead of the front into the 50s. It will become breezy. See the isobar pattern right here come Friday morning. Southwest winds will develop Friday helping to pump uh, some milder air into the mid-Atlantic region. Then that frontal system slides on by and it tends to stall out. Here we go by Friday night cutting through Virginia and that front will stall out and here's wave number one. Again this is one model run from last night's 6D GFS model run. Uh, here's wave number one comes Saturday morning. Certainly chance for snow across Virginia, Maryland, Delmarva Peninsula, southern New Jersey, maybe as far north as southern Pennsylvania, still a few days away to go before this. It's a relatively fast mover, so it doesn't look like a major system, but we'll, of course, monitor that over the next few days here. And that slides on by, again, GFS is tending to suppress that. Don't know if that's going to turn out that way. It certainly can impact Pennsylvania and uh, upstate New Jersey uh, during the day on Saturday. Then we get into Sunday. Wave number two here out over the Ohio Valley, a little bit more impressive in terms of total precipitation. And again, that moves in perhaps a mixed bag, a late Sunday, Sunday night time frame. Still too early to say the details on that, but that is wave number two. Then we move forward, colder air kind of tends to follow. And then here we get by the late Tuesday, we have another system uh, uh, moving towards the uh, mid-Atlantic region. This particular setup has high pressure to the north. I always say that's a very key factor here. It's kind of a banana high setup here come Tuesday night. More favorable for cold air to be 
uh, sustained in the Mid-Atlantic region and here we a lot, a lot of moisture here at this particular time. That could affect us Tuesday night or Wednesday. Let's move forward here and indeed the GFS has a pretty good snow event right now for next Tuesday night, Wednesday, still a week away, but that's the, uh, the third system in what could be a series of systems to, to monitor closely for the upcoming weekend and going into the middle part of next week. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.